Hello everybody, welcome back to Jersh React. In this video, I'm going to react to something uh, as requested by Patreon executive producer, Dr. Gonzo. Uh, Gonzo has very specific instructions here for me to follow for the reaction request for the month of June. Uh, to my knowledge, at the very least, all that I know is that it's four mini mixtapes of like three tracks. So 12 tracks total, four videos, three songs apiece. He has everything blocked as spoilers and said that I'm only to reveal it once I actually start recording the video. And I'm, so here we go. <clears throat> um, from Dr. Gonzo, all content below to be included on recording, reveal the spoiler blocks of text sequentially as you read, unless instructed to do otherwise. So here we go. So we'll start revealing. Wow, Jersh. You've sure done it this time. You've really gone and done it this time. You wandered into the wrong shed and have been transported to the ethereal plane. Cue dramatic music for our wayward hero. You begin to squint your eyes open, fighting to peer into the blindingly pale and misty ether that now surrounds you. As you acclimate, you scan your surroundings, blood and breath pumping hurriedly in your daze. There is only you. You and milky gray desolation as far as sight can penetrate. You should write, Gonzo. The initial feverish fight or flight response coursing through your tangled mess of fleshy systems begins to fade as you adjust your senses. You acquiesce. You breathe a long, knowing sigh. Of course, this strange but inevitable curl of fate can only be attributed to a judgment of the Jersh curse. <laughs> Scanning the misty whitewash and ashen crags that stretch beyond, you notice something in the fog. Four amorphous silhouettes pulsating and undulating against the pale expanse. Stand just a donut's throw away. They're the only signs of energy amid this otherwise endless immaterial waste. <clears throat> These are the four portals of your destiny. Is it destiny or is it all a choice in the end? Regardless of the philosophical means, you know the ends remain fixed. You must pass through all four, one after another, in the month of June, on camera, in different recordings, possibly wearing different clothes, but maybe not, to return to your mortal realm. But what lies beyond each, you decide to investigate closer. And then there's a note here, reveal all portal descriptions one by one, then choose only one to pass through per reaction. Okay, so I can pick the order, one, two, three, or four. Use, this is really cool. Okay. One, two, three, or four. <clears throat> hmm. Mm. We'll go with portal two. The portal glows softly in hues of deep blue that disseminate to an airy, pale shade of early spring sky at the edges. It is boldly prominent, yet barely there. From its depths, you hear the sounds of the open, deep sea. Beneath that, a pulsating metronome of low bass with a faint rising chorus of screams, clamoring in unintelligible emotional tongues, blending to one crescendo after another. When you move close, you feel the soft, cool patter of acid rain on your skin. It stings slightly, but you are somehow bathed in comfort. So let's get our... Dive into an endless blue wonderland of dreams and the unknown with spirit box. Th I'm thrilled. I'm so happy. <laughs> All right, let me get this loaded up here. Okay, so portal number one is Spirit Box, which if you were unfamiliar so far, I have not liked Spirit Box. So 
So I'm curious to see if these tracks can turn me around. The first song is called The Summit. I'm not, I mean, I'm thinking of the right band, right? I think Gonzo and Zalbinian probably know the most. Isn't Spirit Box the name of that band that I reacted to a while ago that had like a 20-minute song that I thought the drums were just awful and I didn't really connect with the melody and I thought the lyrics were... That's the same band, right? If it's not that band, then they just have a lot of things in common. Anyway, this sounds way different than that band. I think that band also tried to... They the singer screamed, and maybe she'll scream in this song, I don't know, but uh, I definitely like this a lot more than any of the other Spirit Box stuff that I've heard. Um, I like uh, the musical sound, I like the melody. What's funny is the melody of the verse, even though it's a lower octave, it actually really reminds me of Delicate by Taylor Swift. Um, so if you listen to the verse of this song, um, is it the verse? What's yeah the chorus of delicate and the verse of this song sound similar in cadence and melody but this is a lower octave for sure let's keep going Yeah. 
Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I like that song. I, I feel like there's probably a segment of their fan base that probably hates that song because this sounds like a sold out song. Like it's not metal enough. It wasn't, you know, unintelligible screaming the whole time. And it wasn't out of this world, insane, melt your face guitar and drums the whole way. There actually was like a cadence and a purpose behind, you know, this is the verse portion. This is the melody and mood we're going for. We want to amp it up in the chorus, you know, in the breakdown in the end. I actually thought, I thought the drums and the tempo of the song was really good in this song. Um, I like how it built up and how there was a lot of, you know, repetitive snare at the end to really, to really bring home the ending of the song. Um, again, a lot th more thoughtful melodies. Yeah, I feel, I feel like this is probably like maybe one of their most mainstream sounding songs. And then there was like almost pop music digitization of the voice at the end. Just been going over the lyric here, trying to see if something speaks to me. Um, I think the venom is what keeps me alive is like when doubters or haters are, are waiting on you to fail. I think um, that's what she's saying is like, that's what fuels her to keep going, to try to, you know, climb the summit, to keep reaching peaks she's never been to before, is all of these people, you know, an open road is like an open mouth. It's like strangers watching you are just waiting to, like, swallow you up when you fail and, and like, eat it up. Yeah, their lips are going to open wide like a serpent tongue, so yeah. <clears throat> Desperate to find that beating heart of mine that always makes me run. So yeah, so you doubting, you being you know, venomous and evil and waiting to see me fail is only going to fuel me to be more successful. It's kind of what I get from that song. So, good song. Hurt You. Is this a Nine Inch Nails sequel? Don't. Look at me like that. <laughs> I'm already less interested in this song. <laughs> it's like sang a lyric and then stop. Places, people, places, people. We're getting ready to start Act 2. Um, this is when uh, the sexy aliens give a blue blood sacrifice, and it's all very metaphoric. Okay, here we go. When she screams, I feel nothing. I don't, it just, her scream voice doesn't work for me. I like her singing voice a lot, but um, I don't know. I guess it's all subjective, but it just, I immediately think of Tatiana, 
Corey Taylor, Chester Bennington. I literally, I, yeah, I just, I think of, I think of screaming voices that do work on me when I hear one that doesn't. And I don't think when you're singing and I'm listening to your song, I don't think the point is to have me wishing I was listening to another. You know what I mean? Um, mu it's musically competent and sounds um, like music wise. I would say this one is probably just as good as the last one. I, I like the riff. I, I like the, the groove. I, I don't think the drums are out of control or trying to be too much. But just, yeah, like, like everything else about it is like really try hard. Like we're, you know, we're so scary and alien. We're gonna be so dark. People are gonna love it. Twelve Foot Ninja now probably is up there. song and i thought the video was trying too hard uh lyrically i, I it was hard to tell what she was saying during the verse because the screaming is so unintelligible um but yeah the chorus of i hope you find what you're fighting for i'm happier when i hurt you is like realizing that um you're, you're bad for each other and you're only in a good mood when you're causing pain to the other person, which kind of tells you that you don't really like them very much and you'd be better off trying to find a, a better person for you. Yeah, dysfunction. You're building the tension. I want, I want to escalate out of this stasis. Yeah, it's like they want out of the situation. Kind of like how I felt listening to the song. I we live in a strange world. On nice dreams, lonely, folding on each other, waiting for great things, but all they do is stop. To grace me with cold sleep, for I breathe in, I feel another. Erase me. Face me and hold on to the drop. Sinking in, but we live in a strange world. This doesn't even sound like the same band. Sinking in, but we live in a strange world. And let the best of grind you down. Collapse of things so you don't drown. Sinking in, but we live. Me. 
together. And I don't like the decision here at the end for this last chorus, but everything else about the song I really liked. I'm getting like Evanescence vibes, where it's like you have metal hard music and it is puts you in a, in an, an energetic state, but you have actual melody where you're singing and you have actual lyrics that people can hear and get attached to and that are that seem to be, I guess, more formed and, and, and about uh, a singular topic instead of just the blood, the sky. The sky blood, <laughs> you know. Like, um, let's finish it and then I'll then I'll wrap it. Yeah, that that last chorus didn't work for me as well. I didn't. I wasn't a fan of the of the tempo change. I felt like the tempo on the drums changed, but the guitar stayed the same. And I don't know. Yeah, everything else about it. First ninety percent of the song, I I really liked pretty much everything about it. Liked, yeah, the melody, the the lyrics, the um, the music. Again, this reminds me of like late Linkin Park when they started to make like really pop sounding stuff and really digitized stuff and really get out of their kind of traditional sound. Um, what are my additional thoughts on that? Um, I'd say getting to hear this type of music that this band is able to produce in conjunction with the music of theirs that I genuinely do not like, it makes me respect them more because... It means, it tells me that the music that I don't like, they're choosing to make. It's not that that's the only thing that they can do. That's what they want to do. They want to scream. They want a bunch of drums that don't make any sense. And that's fine. But for me as a listener, I don't enjoy those songs that they make. And so that kind of puts you in a kind of creative crosshairs, a, uh, you know, a, an ethical bind. It's like, well, do I do what I want to make? And you're either along for the ride or you're not. Or do I do what I enjoy just fine, but that I know people like it. It's like, I know you want it. How do I feel about that when I know you're going to like it? You know what I mean? Um, I think probably most successful people that you are aware of lean towards the latter half of like, just do what people like and you'll be successful and I'm sure you're going to be happy as a result, right? Like as long as you do that, you have you can make time for like passion projects where it just actually genuinely means something to you and you don't care if everybody hates it because you're paying the bills with the stuff that everybody likes. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, at the end of the day, like what do I wish I were doing with my life? Like creatively, it's it's filmmaking, it's making movies, it's what I tried to do for a decade, it's it's what I wanted to do my whole life, and it didn't pan out. So now what am I trying to do? I'm trying to write stories, and not shoot them myself, and make them myself. Um, and try to see, is that rewarding for me creatively, and, and does that uh, help me get to where I want my goals to be professionally? I don't know, you know? Um, but what, what do I do in the meantime? What is my focus? What everybody likes, which is me talking about music. So I, you know, I think everybody in their day to day kind of struggles with what do I want to do and what do I have to do, right? And I think this band, I think they want to be that that scream metal, take us as seriously as Ginger and Twelve Foot Ninja band. And to a lot of people, they probably are. That's how they got a fan base. Um, but like for me, for casual listeners or people who aren't invested in their band or or to reach a more broader audience, they probably have to write music like the first and third track in this. And but that's still that's still good. It's still lucky you. You're getting to write music for a living. And 
it's not bullshit music. It's just a different sound. It's a more approachable sound. Anyway, definitely the first track was easily the best. I really liked the first track a lot. I'd probably playlist it. A close second is this one. I did not like the middle track at all. So let's see if there are any more portal instructions from Gonzo here. Okay, so it's literally just listen to the playlist. Okay. Okay, so yeah, there's no further instructions after. So in the next three videos, we will go into the utter, uh, utter, the utter portals. A cow land awaits. And uh, we'll, we'll see uh, what happens there. Thank you, Dr. Gonzo, for, for uh, this request and for this idea, this instead of doing a concept album you've done a concept video uh, re video reaction series which is uh kind of really unique and uh fun in itself regardless of what happens with the music so thank you so much for your support and for this uh request i'm looking forward to going into the rest of the portals if you liked this video make sure you like it comment let me know what was your favorite track of this little mini mix and what do you uh, think about that idea of doing what you have to do and doing what you want to do in your daily life? I'm curious. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.